Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Thursday night Bible study. Um, I am going to try not to be, be, be in front of you too long or hold you too long. Um, but let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come before your throne of grace one more time. We thank you for allowing us to come together as a family, Father, to hear your, hear your words and what you have to say on tonight. Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, I'm going to be coming from Second Chronicle chapter 20. And uh, I'm just going to uh, give you a, few little, a little bit of information before we get started. Um, for instance, Jehoshaphat, um, his first name, his name means um, Yahweh, is judge or has judged. And um, Jerusalem, he lived in Jerusalem. And uh, Judah, of course, you, you know Judah means praise. Um, and then Jerusalem means the city of peace. And um, we're going to try to do 15 verses tonight. So it starts off, and I'm reading the, the Amplified Bible. What's the scripture here? Um, Second Chronicle. Number 20. It's going to be verses 1 through 15. Like I said, I don't know if we're going to get through all of that tonight um, or not, um, but I'm going to try. Um, now, it, now it happened after the Moabites and the Amorites, together with some of the Mennonites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Now, uh, the Moabites and the Mennonites and the um, Mennonites, of course, they are our enemy uh, against um, Judah or Jerusalem and, and stuff. Now, in verse 1, um, uh, bear in mind, like I said, these 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 descendants uh, are the ones God uh, told the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. Don't provoke them. Don't make war with them. And um, so that means no fighting. Uh, I'm just going through my notes here. <laughs> uh, but God did tell them when they came out of Egypt and why they was passing through this land of the Moabites and the Midianites and um, even Mount Seir that you can buy food for them. You can buy water for them. But don't um, don't engage or befriend the enemy. Otherwise, in other words, don't be friends with them. Don't be all lolly dolly and hee 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 ha ha ha. You know, keep it moving. Do what you got to do and keep it moving. And on in verse two, um, um, well, let's go back a little bit. Just, just like with us, when we know people don't like us, we know they don't like us in our hearts. Why we try to be friends with them? <clears throat> you know, knowing that they don't have the, um, they don't have good intention towards us at all. And we try to be friends with me. Good. Well, not me. Because once you do something to me, that's it for me. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it ain't no, oh no, we, no, we gonna hang out and no, no, you know, no, I love you with the love of Christ, but feed you, what they say, feed you with a long hand spoon, 
And but we still have to realize too that God made them too and God loved them too. And that we have to show some type of love, not some type, so love towards them. But you don't have to be involved in their life. Or they certainly don't be involved with your life. And um, in verse two, it says, uh, then it was reported to Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the sea. Um, out of Hazazon Tamar, um, that is Egedi. Uh, I'm going to my note show. <laughs> so Hazazon Tamar, Egedi is about uh, 36 miles from Jerusalem. And it means that name, Hazadar, Tamar means drawing near to bitterness. Um, so it was reported to Jehoshaphat. Um, and this lets me know that the king always have somebody on watch. And the watchers, I call them the watchers, but I know, you know, that the people, Jehoshaphat specifically had a sign, at least when I read this, this is what I, I got from it, that somebody, he had these people watching, watching for the enemy. And we have to, um, Realize that uh, we always have, God always has somebody watching for the enemy to see how close the enemy is to his people. Uh, Ezekiel 36, 33 and 36 says, says but the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet so that the people are not warned. The sword comes and take any one of them that that person take that person take taking that person away in iniquity. The blood is required on the watchman's hand. So when God assigns us to watch and to pay attention, because the scriptures say watch as well as pray. And we should really should be on our post. Nothing, absolutely nothing, should get past us. I'm not just talking a physical, looking with our physical eyes, but you have to see with your spiritual eyes to see in the spirit. Because this thing is just, this thing is not just a physical thing. This is a spiritual thing. And um, um, I'm going to use pastor here. You know, we know pastor is the new pastor up here in Hope Church. And we as a congregation and the clergy team, we should always be on our post watching for danger and having his back. Um, if we see anything amiss, anything at all, um, we should, um, especially, especially, especially spiritual things. These things are there. I'm not going to get into it because things I have experienced myself spiritually. That it is no joke. Because the enemy is no joke. The enemy is out to kill us. And that's both physically and spiritually. He out to kill us. And especially, especially with pastors. You notice lately, um, pastors are under attack like crazy. You know, um, people calling them liars or, or, or um, well, in a better word, assassinating their characters and attacking their families. And if you notice the least little thing, if they say anything out of the way, anything, Immediately, it's on YouTube, it's on the news, 
It's just and just and that. So, but we're the watchers. We're the ones that have discerning spirits that that is not only pray, praying for the pastor, but so in tune with the spirit that when God showed them something, immediately they should tell the pastor. And um, so we should always, always um, keep that in mind. Um, just like the watches came to jo jo Jehoshaphat and told him, Judge Hasselfat is a leader. He was a reformer. And he told them, they told them um, that the, the enemy was coming. And they even told them how far they were away from, from their, um, uh, from how far away from Ju uh, Judea, and Judea, Judea and Jerusalem they were. Although when they told Jehoshaphat in verse it says, then Jehoshaphat was afraid and um, set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all Judea. Right? Jehoshaphat, um, although he was afraid, he didn't allow fear to cripple him or allow himself or allow the fear I should say to cause him to do something impulsive like going out and engage the engaging in battle with the Mennonites, the Moabites and the Ammonites uh, without seeking God first. Because you notice he immediately, immediately fell on one knees and started praying and causing um, um, calling the facts. And he didn't just um, do this by himself. He did a corporate prayer and a corporate fast. That means that everybody was in, involved with this. Everybody was on the fast and everybody was praying. Um, and this is, um, and that's just like with us, right? With the body of Christ. We should never ever engage the, in, the, the enemy without seeking God first um, and praying and fasting. And um, this is something I'm not all that bread is patient and being patient and waiting um, for God to instruct us and never, never allow um, fear to move us out of position. Uh, right. Pastors do the same. They seek God first with whatever is going on. They seek God first about it. And then they bring it before the, before the people. And then the pastor instructs as to what we should be doing. And so we will we should always be in the mode in the mode of obedience and hearing and um, being available when the pastor calls or when the pastor instructs us to do something and not um, push back on it or give him a hard time because you know in his in his um, a long time with God and he's praying. We don't know what God is telling pastor. You know, we need to trust, um, I don't want to say the process, but trust God enough that he put his anointing and presence on pastor. So when he calls us or tells us something, that um, we will follow the instruction. And that's how a lot of times us not following instructions and not um, um, seeking God and doing what God say, it caused a bunch of confusion. You know, it divides the church. And we should not be the weak link in the chain. Okay? 
and verse 4. It says, so, so Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord for him with all their hearts. Uh, you know this Joe Jehoshaphat. Um, he didn't try to fight this battle by himself. Um, he re um, and remember, remember, this is a spiritual thing. Our enemies are not flesh and blood. Ephesians, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It takes the whole body, the whole body, the whole church to come together to fight along with pastor against any enemy that comes against the body of Christ against our whole family. So which means that somebody come up in here I remember Pastor Smith when he was so and so and so. I remember First Lady when she was so and so and so. You know you stop them in their tracks right away. You know, and don't you engage with, oh, oh, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, you know, I remember that too. You know? No, that's, that's engaging the enemy. Because that's what the, want, the enemy wants us to do, is to um, talk bad about the pastor. Give them something to go by to other churches to talk about. And I'm, uh, I am, when it comes to pastors, I have a heart for them because of my spiritual mother. And my best friend is a pastor. So I see what they go through up close. And um, and I heard people talk, of, talk to and ask questions, which none of their business anyway, you know, about them. So that's why I'm always, you know, pastor, 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 because I see it. Why they, why we sleeping and, and stuff, and I bed all comfortable and whatever. Um, God may have them up all night praying for us. We don't know. So it's, so it behooves us as the body of this church to stick with pastor. I don't know what God got me, why me, I'm saying this stuff, I don't know. But apparently it's something that has to be heard. Um, to Pastor, like I said, he's new and stuff, although he's been um, actually in the role for a long time, actually acting in the role for a long time, he still, he still needs us to stick with him and be there for him. Anything that, and I'm not talking about just the clergy team. I'm talking about the whole body of Christ here in church, in, in, in Old Church. Because he calls and asks us, one of us, to do something. Um, we should say, okay, Pastor, no problem. We'll get it taken care of. Okay. That's right. Okay, Pastor. Okay, Pastor. Okay, Pastor. And this... <laughs> And this goes from me too, so like I was telling my sisters and brothers in Christ earlier, I don't like being up front. I'd rather be in the background, to be honest with you. Um, but whatever the pastor called me to do something, and if I can do it, and if I know how to do it, I would do it. And verse 5 says, Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Ju um, Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord in front of a in front of the new courtyard. Um, 
Jehoshaphat, right? They needed their leader. But one thing I like about Jehoshaphat is that he was a godly man, but he he's um he showed an example. Because if you read read before, he he's the one that got on his knees and prayed first. And then he um he um incorporated the, the, his the people into it. And uh, so he he showed them example by his own personal devotion to God. And um, don't you want a leader like that? You don't want no leader that is all flighty and and stuff. Can't make up their mind one way this way and one way that way. And you don't, you know. Right. But who want to follow somebody like that who's not stable? And well, thank God that we don't have such leaders, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because at least when he when we know that pastor when he goes into battle, um, we have a leader that goes into battle. We have a former leader that goes know how to go into battle. And I'm sorry, if you was in the military or out there a cop on the street, you don't want nobody that you can't count on and stuff um, out there. Somebody shooting at you and they running the other way. You don't want nobody like that. And we don't, and we don't need leaders like that that can't stand their ground that can't stand up against the adversary. Yes, people can ask us to pray, and they need to pray for themselves as well. But we need to be in a position or be where it's so if they call on you to pray, that you can do it right then and there. And, and not to be bragging about myself, I had that happen to me today on my job. One of my, co my co-worker, her mother, in the hospital and she don't go to church and she outright told me she said well I don't pray and um, I said that's alright you ain't praying I am you know and so and I prayed for her while I was praying for her she was crying you know and um, and God asked her do you do you believe and stuff so, and I said well God got you back don't worry your mom will be okay God got you and got her so she said, oh, I hope so. No, not, I hope so. You know so. And then I had to realize something for somebody who don't go to church, don't pray, don't, I mean, she said she's sleeping, she believes. Um, but that's a hard thing for her. But that's not, a, that wasn't a hard thing for me because I believe and I trust God. And, 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 and it's, it's important that, well, thank God that we, we set on the good leadership. And people don't realize how important having a good leader is, set on the good leadership that the word is being taught and preached and lived. And most important, that you can see that they live it. You know, being in the corner somewhere or, or, or sneaking around the corner and you, well, you shouldn't be around the corner either, but you'd be around the corner <laughs> and you, <laughs> See, 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 and we don't have that. And um, I'm speaking about the character of a leader, or our leader. Um, because I remember when I first came here, he was very, very friendly and nice to me and welcomed me and stuff like that. And then when I look at him, I see a humble man. And that's how Joe Hassafat was. He was humble. But he wasn't. Um, um, he wasn't uh, afraid uh, to get on his knees and pray. Uh, I'm on six. And, and said, O oh Lord, God of our Father, are you not the God of heaven? And do you not rule, do you, you are not, you not rule over 
all the kingdoms of the nation. Power, might, power and might are in your hands. There is no one able to make a stand against you. Amen. Um, hallelujah, Jesus. Jeho jo jo Jehoshaphat was um, recognizing who God, recognizing God for who He is. Um, before we ask God for anything in prayer, we ourselves we should we should always. Acknowledge his sovereignty. We shall always worship him, not just in church when we come. Now, some people sing, I can't sing, so I won't be doing that. Okay? But you tell God you're worthy. God, you, like I like to say, you the iron line of Zion, you the rose of Sharon. You are my king, my savior. You are the lover of my soul. And all this is worshiping and praising God, recognizing who God is. Once you've done that, once you give God the glory, once you give God the praise, and once you worship God, then you ask for forgiveness. I was taught, you don't go to bed, you ask God for forgiveness every single day. And, um, and then you go into prayer, then you go and ask God, um, or at least talk to them, telling them what you stand in need of. Um, but he knows before you even ask what you stand in need of. But God, God don't mind you setting and um, talking to him and telling him what you need, or at least what you desire, because a lot of times we, we tell God what we want, but a lot of things, and, and, and I'm guilty of this, my own self, and not um, not telling God what we need, you know, because um, he can talk to you, you know, and again, I'm going to use myself as an example. I like to spend money, y'all, and I love to shop <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> and I, as you all know, that I, I work at Macy's, and I keep telling myself, this week I ain't spending no money. <laughs> okay? And last week it was ridiculous, the money I spent. Now I work at Macy's to get extra cash, but I give it back to the soap. Like most of us in Macy's, but I give it back, right back, to the point God tell me, stop it. No more spending. You know, no more buying stuff. And that's gonna be hard for me. You know, um, but He will give you what you need. Amen. Amen. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying to get through this. Um, you know what I like about this whole thing you said so far? Is that before you got to number six, the song I've never really read, it's like you're reading it now, mm -hmm. is that as soon as he began to fear, he didn't go and just call on the Lord by himself. He called for the all of you to come and let's do this thing together. You know, and that did remind me of, you know, the, the uh, prayer plays and fast times Amen. that Pastor has done up until this point. Yes. You call the whole body together, and in six, they're all sort of, they're all praising and worshiping yes. and acknowledging who God is. And so this flow is, reminds us when we fear, we can, we can call. Mm -hmm. We call the body mm -hmm. into 
no position to begin to worship and praise God and be reminded of who God is, right? Yes, yes. So I, I thank you for, you know, doing this. I really had to look at it this way. But it's close things. <laughs> <laughs> and in verse 7 says, O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? and give it forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham. Down here, uh, Jehoshaphat is announcing the great work God did on behalf of his people in the past. And the fact that, um, the fact that he can do it again and reminding God of his covenant. And like I was saying before, it's all right when you, in your private time, and you talk to God to remind God of his word. Because that's what he said, come read, let's reason together. Right? It's okay. And, um, but for us, uh, like I said, we can, we can remind God of his promises to us. Plus, all we have to do is look back on our life and see what God has brought us from. So when we in a situation now, don't get fearful. Or, um, and God is working on me too with this, with this too. Um, don't get fearful. And um, God, look back at your life and see what God brought you from. You know, um, God has brought me, I've been through a lot of stuff I don't really tell people a whole lot about my testimony, but I've been through a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So at one point when I was younger and I had both of my kids, I did not have money for a bar of soap, okay? Now I can go and Mason shop whenever I want to shop, <laughs> you know? And that's just how far God has, um, bought me and I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. And thank God that you don't look like what you've been through. That's all that's right. Amen. And uh, verse uh, down to verse 8. They have lived in and built and have built you a sanctuary in it, and your name saying, um, you'll have to say, we are standing in this temple in your presence. You'll have to that stood on the grounds of previous prayers and prior and answers, again, looking back. And this echoes the prayer of Solomon paid prayed at the um, dedication of the temple. And it calls upon God to answer not only just Jehoshaphat, but um, Solomon as well. Uh, we often, all of us, at some time or another, stand on our grandparents' pray prayer, living off of our grandparents' prayer, aunts and uncles, mom and dad, we live off of their prayers. Amen. You know, I do, again, not to be bragging on myself, I remind my kids all the time, you know, thank goodness I have two good men, you know, and being a single parent, raising two boys by myself, and thank God for Jesus. I always give God glory for that. And I tell them, that although I was in my sin, um, well, with my older son, I was still in the world. But with my younger son, I went back, came back to church and got saved, but was in a backslidden state. But I had common sense enough to know to pray for my children while they were in my womb. You know, and I believe that God, I not, not believe, I know that God answered my prayer. Because God knows my children could be out, out world somewhere, in jail somewhere, doing drugs somewhere, hitting somebody inside the head somewhere, you know, and that's why I give God the glory, 
and I tell them, you and my children do well is, is doing very well for themselves, right? It's because of God. And my oldest son now is 34. He's just now seeing that. Before I talk to him about God, I don't want to know nothing about God. You know, and he it was in church, you know. You know how we all was like that, you know. But now that he's in his 30s and he's gone through some stuff himself, now he sees. Because I, you guys know the, the last accident. A few months ago, he was in a really serious accident. To the point now that he may have to have surgery done on his shoulder. Um, and which means he will be out of work for um, four months. But he said, Mommy, I never prayed so hard so much in my life. You know, and um, still ain't with the church yet, but <laughs> I pray that you'll get there too. You know, um, so by me praying, taking them to church and praying with them and, and stuff like that, you know, it's, in, it's, it's coming up in them now. You know, my younger son, just pray for him. <laughs> He's 22, so hey. <laughs> Not that that's an excuse. Um, okay, verse 9. If evil comes on us, or the sword of judgment, or plague, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you. And we will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us. No matter what comes against us, uh, we still, no matter what, no matter how dire the situation uh, may be, no matter who's threatening us, it could be a bill collector, or it could be somebody physically threatening us, and stuff, stand. Stand in God's presence. Don't stop coming to church. Um, what you're going through. Because some people, when they go through, they stop coming to church. Don't stop coming to church. You out there in Facebook land, if you're going, if, if you're going through something, come to church. This is where your protection is. This is where prayer and worship is going on. Come. Nobody's going to look down on you. Trust me. we all been there. And so stay, always stay, stay in the presence of God, no matter what. In verse 10. Now behold the sons of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not allow Israel to invade. When they came from the land of Egypt, here they are, rewarding us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us as an inheritance. Jehoshaphat prayed with both knowledge and understanding of God's word. He remembered God, did not God allow um, God did not allow Israel to invade these people uh, when they came uh, to Egypt to the promised land. Uh, now, remember God said, do not provoke them. Don't go to war with them. Um, and God even blessed them we know that God will even bless the unsaved. God even blessed them. Because um, um, in Deuteronomy 2 says, do not provoke them, for I will, I will not give you any of their land, not even a little, as a step, because I have given my share to Esau as a possession. And the Lord said to me, do not harass 
Moab, or nor um, provoke them to war. I can say that word, y'all. <laughs> For I will not give you any of their lands as a possession, because I have given earth to the sons of Moab and Ammon of Lot as possession. Now, you see God to bless these people. Give them a land and everything. What they gonna do? They gonna, well, get disobedient to God anyway. But they gonna come against Judah. Against them. You say, hey God, I can imagine the whole world. Joe, Joe Ashraf saying, look, look man, you did all this and and you let these people and me, your people, you gonna let these people come home and come attack us and come against us? You know, what's up with that? Mm -hmm. I know you're gonna do something about that. Because I know, I know I will be saying that. Man, come on, Father. You tell me to do this for this person, this, that person, and they gonna turn around and talk about me, and they gonna turn around and stab me in my back? You gonna do stuff? What you gonna do about this? You know? But we have to trust God and trust the process. Um, although God told them not to, this is my thinking now. This ain't nothing God tells you. This is my thinking. Um, Now, God didn't wipe them out and stuff, but I think things are done in a season that just to show Jerusalem and Judah to his people, his, his power, he may not, the enemy, that's what I, God may not do some, do anything right then and there, or you do something, or the enemy, somebody may do something to you, and they may not get it right then and there, but sure enough, everybody gonna get a paycheck. Whether it's on this side of the joy, or on the next side of the joy. But everybody getting a paycheck. Now, how you get your paycheck is up to you. How you get your paycheck. Now, I want my paycheck to be in heaven. I know y'all want y'all to take check to be in heaven too because otherwise you're going to be in this class. So, you know. Um, but in the end, God took care of them. Um, and verse 12. We almost done, y'all. Oh God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless against a great multitude which is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but your eyes are on, on us. I think I read that wrong, y'all. But our eyes are on you. Just get for typing and not, <laughs> not reading um, directly from the, um, the word. Here, jo Jehoshaphat, the, the king, is standing for his, before his people. Openly, he openly confessed that he didn't have the answer. Um, and sometimes, and it's all right for pastor to say, I don't know, sometimes I don't know. But let me pray about it and talk to God about it. It goes back to again praying and getting on your knees and spending your quality time with God so you can hear God. Um, so their only answer was to trust God. That his power and goodness will protect Ju um, Judea, Judah sorry, um, when no, nothing else could or no one else could. And thank God that, again, they looked to God. They didn't take on anything on their own. They went to God. And remember, we are not dealing with flesh and blood. This is not a flesh and blood fight. 
God has given us weapons. Praying is a weapon. Fasting is a weapon. Corporate gathering is a weapon. Seeking God and reading his word is a weapon. Having faith is a weapon. Trusting God is a weapon. And every time we say in the name of Jesus, it's a reminder of who he is and the covenant that he has with us and that we are his seed. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principality, against powers, against rulers of darkness of, of this world, yes. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Um, so our weapons are spiritual weapons, not a physical thing. And when people come against us, we have to remember a lot of times, and again, I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes I don't remember that. And sometimes I get in my attitude. And sometimes I get in my feelings. And sometimes, and I have to ask God to forgive me if I'm a little bit, a little bit better at it now. Somebody say something to me, I'm quick with my mouth. Or quick with my attitude. In a heartbeat. But I'm getting better, y'all. And, um, Example again, my same co-worker, sometimes <laughs> the way she say things, she thinks she's my boss and we do the same thing. And we have our, I have my office and she has her office. And now you should hear me sometimes mumbling under my breath. She thinks she, she ain't my boss. <laughs> you know, and my boss on vacation this week. So, you know, um, and, and it's, it's, it's my turn because I'm a, um, I work for a logistic company. So I have to do, like, get trucks and dispatch trucks and, and this thing and pay people and all that kind of stuff I have to do and stuff. And I think she thinks um, that, okay, she needs to tell me what to do. And I don't know, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I let her stuff I don't want to do. I let her, okay, you can. Go ahead, right ahead. You know. <laughs> Thank God they're not listening. They ain't watching this. <laughs> <laughs> and um, verse 13. So all Judas, Judah, um, Judah stood before the Lord with their infants and their wives and their children. Everybody in this fight. Ain't nobody is in for it. Everybody is in it. Everybody got to pray and fast. But fast with a little kiss, you know. <laughs> but everybody's in this fight. Because Satan attacks the little ones too. You know? And the teenagers too. And that's why we always got to keep them in prayer at all times. And um, now on verse 14, then in the midst of the assembly, in the midst of the assembly, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehoshaphat, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jehiel, and the son of Mater Madaniah, Madaniah, a Levi, a Levi of the house of Asher. He said, "Listen carefully, all you, Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Hathor." Now, God always has somebody where we're. No matter what we're going through or we're going through something, and again, I'm giving myself an example as that happened to me quite a bit. You know, God always has somebody to bring the word. Um, always have a prophet, which is the pastor, um, to bring the word, a word of encouragement. 
the word that he'll tell you, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Surely, if he tells you he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And we on our last verse. He said, listen carefully. All Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and can answer back. The Lord said, this is this to you. Be not afraid of this man. This great multitude for the battle is not yours, but it is God. Now, this spiritual battle is a battle we cannot war in and flesh and blood. Like I said earlier, God gave us special um, spiritual weapons. When we in a battle, a spiritual battle, we must, must pull out our weapon. And, um, and we must use these weapons to see and to hear. And what, excuse me, when God sees us using these weapons, um, he sees it and he hears it, and he goes to war on our behalf. But first, we have to use his weapon. He hear you if you do your sincere prayer and you fasting and praying. Um, um, he hears and he goes to battle for us. Thank God that God goes to battle for us. He hears us when he when when he call when we call him. He hears us and. That's it. Anybody have any questions or concerns or statements or something to say? Yeah, I wanted to say um, down here in verse 9 where um, Jehovah, well, first I want to say that um, I love how Jehovah, King Jehoshaphat comes before the Lord. It's like he's coming naked, like he's just um, yeah. Just, you know, revealing his heart. You know, I love how he says, you know, um, if disaster comes upon us, the sword, judgment, pestilence, a famine, all of those are scary things. You know, yeah. they come upon us, fear will automatically strike us, you yes. know. But the fact that he uses that, and, and if they should come, he's saying that we will stand before you. So he's definitely honoring God. And then he says, you know, that even in this, we don't even know what to do. So he's totally reliant on God Amen. to help him and show him what to do. You know, God had his back. Yeah. You know, but sometimes I think we have to come to that place where it's not about us. It's not us doing it, but mm -hmm. we're relying on God and we're standing naked before him and just opening our heart. Amen. 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 So now. I like it from some other where he says we were reminding them. He says that the possessions that you gave us, they coming to get. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just reminds you know, I'm like, God, you gave this to me. Yeah. You know, the stuff that, you know, you know, I don't know how I want to keep what you gave me, Lord. You know, <laughs> yeah. they're coming to take it. <laughs> and so in that kind of, you know, real cry and real vulnerable Amen. prayer to Amen. the Lord that God, you gotta do something. Your stuff that they try to take. Yeah, what you gonna do, man? <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> Anything else? Okay. I let y'all five minutes early. Ain't that fun? Ain't that nice? <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come together once again. Lord, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for speaking, Father. We thank you for understanding and revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless y'all.